Hello again folks, uh, welcome to this video, another video on hypothesis testing for the proportion of a binomial distribution uh, and in this video we're going to focus on uh, p-values or the p-value method for hypothesis tests. Um, so we're going to look at an example we've already met, uh, we've got a spinner four coloured spinner that was spun 20 times. Uh, a green only came up twice, uh, so we might want to test whether the spinner is biased against getting a green. Uh, and here we're given the 5% significance level that I'll come back to later. So this sort of problem, uh, the first thing we always have to do is decide what our random variable is. In this case, our random variable is going to be the number of greens that we get. So we can say that x is the number of green results. We always have to write down the hypotheses. The null hypothesis, if you remember, uh, is the default position. So we would assume that the spinner is fair. We would assume that the probability of getting a green is one quarter. What we're testing is to see whether it's biased against getting a green. So our alternative hypothesis is going to be that the probability of getting a green is less than a quarter. So here are our two hypotheses. Next thing we have to do is assume that the null hypothesis is true and write down the distribution of our random variable. So we would assume that x follows a binomial distribution. Each spin can either be green or not green. Uh, it's spun 20 times and the probability of getting a green is a quarter. Again, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. We're now going to look at uh, a graph of some results. Um, so along the bottom I've got different numbers, possible numbers of green uh, greens that come up. Uh, obviously it should carry on to 20, but as we get higher and higher the probabilities just become uh, too small. Um, and what we, uh, what we have is the situation where we're looking for very few greens to demonstrate that there is a probability of less than a quarter of getting a green. So our critical region is going to be down at this end. Uh, our significance level tells us that the sum of these probabilities has to add up to less than 5%. All right. Um, <clears throat> and in the critical region method, we try and find a value of x where the probability that x is less than that value is less than 5%. In this p-value method, it's slightly different. <clears throat> um, we can actually take our test statistic and uh, find the probability that x is less than or equal to our test statistic and then compare that to our significance level. So here are all the results. We know that our test statistic, the number of greens, is x equals 2. So what we can actually do is find the probability of getting two or less greens. X is less than or equal to two. Uh, and uh, here is our test statistic. We would then compare that probability to our significance level of 5%. So how is that? Uh, well, sorry, one other thing. Uh, hopefully you uh, can see that if the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 comes out to be less than 5%, then automatically that would mean that 2 is in our critical region. So that's the thought process. If it comes out to be greater than 5%, then the 2 must be to the right of the critical value. It's not in the critical region. So that's how we use this, uh, this method. Uh, how do we do it then uh, on our calculator? Um, well, good thing is with this method we only need to work out one binomial cumulative probability. All right, so we can just use BCD. Um, so we go to menu, uh, seven statistical distributions, and then it's BCD is not one of those options. So press down for more options, and then press one for the binomial cumulative distribution. Um, for this. Uh, approach we only need to find one probability so I would just go for the variable option number two. Um, so at this point it gives you the chance to enter your uh, x value, the test st statistic, uh, your n 
which is the total number of spins, your P, which is the prob probability uh, of just a quarter. And once you put those in, you can press equals again, and you should find that the probability of X is less than or equal to two comes out to be 0 0.0913. Okay. Um, so the question is, is that bigger or smaller than our significance level. So significance level 0 0.05, this is 0 0.09, you can see it is greater than our significance level. So that would tell us that it is not in the critical region because less than or equal to 2 means that this one, this bar, the probability plus this one plus this one comes out to be more than our significance level. So just like uh, with other methods, you, you're not going to be expected to sketch this graph out every time. So how would we show our working? Well, we would write down the first three steps that we've already talked about. And then we could say that the probability that x being less than or equal to our test statistic is 0 0.0913. That we compare to our significance level. So in this case, it's greater than 0.05. And that tells us that there is no evidence to reject H0. All right. We need this to be less than our significance level if uh, we want evidence to reject H0. So what does that tell us in context? Then it tells us there is no evidence that the spinner is biased against green. All right. So just... Uh, summarize those steps uh, very similar to critical region method but for this one we write down the variable we then write down our two hypotheses we write down the distribution assuming that the null hypothesis is correct we work out our p-value the probability of getting our test statistic or more extreme uh, we then write down our decision on the null hypothesis and finally, we write down our conclusion in the context of the problem. OK, <clears throat> we're going to look at uh, a similar example now uh, that you might have seen before, depending on which videos you've watched. Um, but this one, uh, same spinner, spun 20 times. The blue came up nine times. So we might want to uh, test whether the spinner is biased in favour of getting blue. So, first few steps, exactly the same. Uh, our variable is going to be the number of blue results this time. The null hypothesis would assume that the probability of getting blue is a quarter. The alternative, if the spinner is biased in favour of getting blue, the alternative would be that the probability of getting blue is greater than a quarter. Next step. We assume that the null hypothesis is true and write down the distribution of our random variable. So x follows a binomial distribution, n is 20, p is a quarter. Next bit, <clears throat> uh, if we go back to the graph, we're now we know that uh, we got nine, nine blues. So we would be wanting to find the probability of getting nine or more for this uh, hypothesis test. All right, nine or more extreme. Remember, we would expect to get five. Nine is more than five. So nine or more extreme means nine or more. So there is our critical region. <clears throat> we want the probability that X being greater than or equal to nine to be less than 5%. Using your calculator, you should be able to work out the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. All right. You probably uh, have to do x is less than or equal to 8 first, um, but you should have a way of doing that. All right. Um, then we can think about what we actually write down um, when we're showing our working out. So we've got the first three steps. The fourth step is simply to work out our p-value. So probability that x is greater than or equal to 9, so 9 blues or more extreme, is 0 0.041, which is less than 
So that tells us that if this example, there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And in the context of the question, that tells us there is evidence that the spinner is biased in favour of getting blue. OK, that's it for this uh, video on using the p-value. So hopefully that's helped with that um, and try some of the other videos for other aspects of binomial hypothesis testing. Thank you.